In the tutorial about the interface of vitamin BW, we learned that there are two processes available, singleton and triple tone. Let's recap. With an image opened in Photoshop, we can launch vitamin BW from the filter menu. Choose a conversion, whether we want to use a black and white filter, and if we want a tint or not. Once we've made our choice, we're ready to use Singleton. This tutorial explains how this process works, whereas Triple Tone will be discussed in another tutorial. As a reminder, keep in mind that Vitamin will only work in RGB. The picture we start with is similar to the one of the harbour, which we can choose for the preview. I'd like to create a strong contrast so my choice falls on the Boost conversion and the red filter. A neutral tint is OK, so it's just a matter of hitting single tone. Vitamin goes into processing, and this is the result we are presented with. The first important thing we need to discuss is the structure of the layers in the Layers panel. As we can see, there are three image layers, starting from the bottom, the original picture in color, and two black and white versions, which need to be discussed. First of all, the black and white layers are contained in a group named Vitamin BW. The layer below is named flat with a reason. It comes from the RGB channels of the image without further manipulation. If choice of black and white filter produces a different result, the topmost layer, born with a layer mask attached, is named Conversion. In this case it's also labeled Boost, because that was our choice. Why do we need two black and white layers? The base layer is usually rather flat but the conversion can be very aggressive. I personally like this particular result because of the added drama in the sky and the movement in the water. But let's assume that I find it too far-fetched instead. To reduce the effect, we can choose any blend we like between the two layers, flat and conversion. The most straightforward way is to use the opacity cursor. Both layers are set to normal mode at 100%, so the base layer is actually hidden by the conversion layer. But we may reduce the opacity of the latter to, say, 60% or whatever we like, to obtain a less pronounced effect. This is what I call a global blend. Global because it involves the whole image and doesn't target specific areas. In other words, if you decide to blend 60, 40, like in this case, this ratio will be applied to each pixel. It's worth mentioning that normal is not the only blend mode available. Darken and lighten, for instance, are worth exploring. If we change the blend mode of the conversion layer to darken, we pick whatever pixel is darker from either layer and obtain a gloomy effect. Otherwise, we may choose Lighten and let shine whatever pixel is lighter in either layer. A very different effect. Even in this case, we have opacity if we need it. But of course, we are not limited to global blends. The layer mask available on the conversion layer allows us to blend the two layers locally with whatever precision we want. Let me show you how. We're going to use a portrait this time. My choices for this photograph are default conversion, a green filter which usually yields good results with skin tone, and a warm tint. One click of the mouse on single tone, Photoshop goes into processing, and here's the result. Notice that we now have a third layer stacked on top of the two already discussed. This is because 
we've chosen a non-neutral tint in this picture. The tint layer is set to color blend mode so that the luminosity of the underlying layers is used while the color of it is retained. Let's zoom in a bit. We can see that this conversion has a problem, which is halos. Halos are unfortunately common in this kind of processing when a photograph contains a flat background like this one and they are sometimes not welcome. Lowering the opacity of the conversion layer to, say, 50% won't do or won't do enough. If we set it to 50%, the problem is reduced but still present. Most of all, the effect on the face is reduced as well and that's probably not what we want. The key point is that the base layer contains no halos at all. So we may hope to solve the problem by recovering some parts of the image from this layer. A lot of efforts have been made to create a tonally compatible flat layer so that the blends are usually smooth and easy to perform. So, enter the layer mask. The conversion layers comes to life with white mask attached. Remember the basic rule of layer masks. Black hides white reveals. A white mask, therefore, means that the layer is fully visible. A layer mask can be activated by clicking on it and you can tell it's active from the four corners which now surround it. We now invert it via Image, Adjustments, Invert or Command I and the mask becomes black. This means the layer is now completely transparent. Of course, we may decide to fill the mask with any shade of grey and we can do so by using, for instance, Edit, Fill, 50% grey, Normal mode, 100% opacity. As you can see from the thumbnail, the mask is now filled with medium grey and this is equivalent to setting a layer opacity of 50%. This is still a global effect. No area in the image is treated differently from another. To make the correction local, we need to paint on the mask. So, with the mask active, I go back to the original white fill Select a round brush with a size of about 300 pixels. Make sure that it's very soft. Select black as foreground color and start painting near the halos. Let's see what's happening. We can inspect the mask by option clicking on it and clearly see the result of our painterly efforts. The area where we put black hides the current layer, the rest remains visible instead. The smooth transition from black to white ensures that no artifacts show in the final image. On different images, of course, a different brush may be a better choice. Option click again to return to the original image. I keep on painting And as I go, at some point, I decide that the sweater should also come from the base layer. The corresponding area in the mask gets, of course, covered in black. We can deactivate the mask by shift-click. This toggles the mask on and off, and the off state is, of course, like having a completely white mask. While it's true that I don't want to have much effect on the sweater, I now realize that I've probably overdone the mask. No fear, a mask is non-destructive and I can bring some of the conversion layer back by using a grey brush. Select some proper grey as foreground color and paint. The sweater is partially revealed. I guess I'm happy with this result, so let's check.
The original conversion can be seen by deactivating the mask. Shift click. The base layer can be seen by making the conversion layer invisible. Now, shift click again to reactivate the mask, make the conversion layer visible, and this is the final result. Quite nice, I would say. If you're curious to see the actual mask, we can option click on it. It is what we expect, and it's amazing that this kind of retouch only took a few seconds in practice. Masks become even more important in the second and most important process of vitamin BW, namely triple tone. Now that we're sure to have mastered their use in the single tone process, we can move to the triple tone tutorial and get the most out of vitamin BW.